Good morning, little ones. How's it going? So this is Frank, and that's Bean. And for the last couple weeks, they've been living inside my mud room. But that situation comes to an end today. So Frankie the goose was hatched out a couple of weeks ago by a mother goose. But unfortunately, that mother goose was kind of negligent and killed two of Frankie's siblings. Not wanting to risk Frankie, I decided to act as the Department of Children and Family Services and remove Frankie from the home and rehome him to our house. That meant I eventually set up a tiny little brooder and got Frankie situated. I also grabbed a little duckling that I had recently hatched and used it as a companion. And that's where Bean comes from. Now for the last couple of weeks, Frank and Bean have been absolutely adorable additions to our farm and particularly our farmhouse. In particular, my wife Allison has absolutely loved having the two of them. She loves cuddling the little baby birds. It's absolutely created a moment of joy for her and I've been happy to provide her with that. But at this point, Frank and Bean are getting too big for their little brooder and too big for their daytime setup. For a little bit more than the past week, I've actually been keeping Frank and Bean outside during the day. And so pretty much from sun up to sundown they've been living inside this chicken tractor i move it every day so they always have fresh grass they have water they have food it's been the perfect daycare setup for the two of them and then at night i just have to bring them inside and they don't need food and water overnight at this age and so i just let them stay inside and it works out okay and frank and bean have developed this very interesting relationship where they are absolutely like connected soulmates like they are joined at the hip frank and bean it's always frank and bean or frankie and beansy but i don't want them only living as a duo for their entire lives and so what i'm doing in today's video is introducing them to their next flock release the quacken so yeah most of my flock of ducklings are no longer ducklings they're pretty much fully fledged ducks they've been living in this brooder house for about the last five and a half weeks most of them are runner ducks but I also do have a fair amount of chicks that are running around, and it's just a good mix of birds. Abby Doug, you need to back up. You're looking way too interested in these little birds. So now my plan is, I'm gonna be moving Frankie and Beansy in here, but they're not gonna live with the ducks. They're actually gonna live with the chicks that I have in here, because Frankie ultimately is gonna become a guard goose for our chicken flocks, particularly the laying flocks that I have much further out from the bird yards where I'm recording this video right now. But in order to make this work, I'm gonna have to let my little duck Ducklings go free. They've been going outside every day, running around for the last, I think it's been about four days. So my first job here is gonna be to sort the chicks from the ducks, because I wanna keep the chickens in here and give them some time to acclimate to Frankie and Beansy. I will admit, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with Beansy. I think it would be easier for me and more natural to actually have Bean go join all the ducks. But Frankie and Beany are such a cohesive unit at this point. I think if I tried to break them apart too soon, it would be traumatic. I might break them apart eventually, but for today, Frankie and Beanie are gonna go live here with the chicks. Abby Dog, you are looking way too interested in these baby birds, so we're gonna need to put you away in the kennel to avoid any accidents while I do this. Come on, come on, Abby, let's go. Good girl. All right, you hang out there. I'll be back for you in a couple minutes. We'll do the cattle, okay? Cattle are always Abby's favorite chore anyway. So you'll notice that the chicks are way less flighty compared to the ducks. That actually makes my job easier. So watch what we're gonna do here. Rise and grind, little ones, out you go. So essentially what I just did is spook them out of the house. Yeah, I haven't even been using their heat plates for the last, I don't know, two weeks. Pull this in, shut that door. This is kind of like the sorting hat for birds, I find. All right, which houses are you guys going to? Easy panic, ducks. All right, now my next step is, I wanna try to get the chicks back in there. Easy, Duffy, you're gonna hurt yourself. Would you look at some of these birds? I think they're beautiful. In you go. Oh no, that chick just escaped. Follow your fam, follow your fam. Come on. There we go. We're ready to go out. Let's open up this door. Now there's one duck I actually want to keep inside. And that's that one right there. That squirmy little one. That's my friend Heidi Grace's favorite duck. She's a little bit younger than everybody else, and so I don't want her to go inside, so I'll actually have her stay with Frank and Bean. Abby, hey, no. Gotcha, squirmy. You are a squirmy little one. All right, out everybody else goes. Oh, and the little chick that escaped wants to come back in. I gotcha. You can go in here. This one I've been a little concerned about. It's much smaller than all the others, even though it's the same age. Come here, come here. I will admit I'm conflicted what to do with this one. I think I might leave it in here for another week or two. I don't think it'll hurt it. In you go. I also think by having a couple of ducks in here, it might help the transition of Bean to joining the duck block. It gives it better odds. 
Now let's go get our final two ingredients. All right, Frank and Bean, let's go. Barn cats, what are you up to? You waiting for me to feed you? You know, Ginny, I just strapped a camera on you. What have you been up to? Well, it's always fun to see what cats do. All right, you two, come on. Let's go, you're going to your new home. You're gonna meet your new roommates. This is like my kids are going off to college. All right, now before we get there, we gotta go across the border and meet the border inspection guard. Hey, Toby, I have some new recruits I'd like you to meet. Check them out. Yeah, he doesn't even care. We'd much rather pee on the fence post, probably. I know, guys, I know, it's very nerve wracking. Time to meet your new friends. I will admit, I'm always super fascinated with moments like this. You really do get to see the interaction of bird hierarchies and social structures. Abby, don't get jealous. Come on, settle down. Abby's seeing a party over here and she really wants to get involved. I think she's a little jealous. Toby Dog though likes watching this stuff with me. The old birds are clearly scared of the new birds. Of course, probably Toby Dog and I aren't helping things, so. Hey Tobes, let's go. Come on. Got a couple cameras set up in here. So I'll let you guys just watch what happens when I'm not around. In my opinion, it's absolutely adorable what's going on right now. Can you see it? The Frankie and Beanie are kind of separate still. They're definitely fitting in. They're not causing chaos. Isn't that right, Frankie? Because Allison spent so much time with Frankie, they are very, very socialized. Same thing with Bean. For those wondering about the sexes of the birds, I'm still not quite sure about Frankie. Uh, so they're going to remain a they, them. Based on the sounds that Bean's making and just some other characteristics I'm starting to see emerge, I think Bean might be a drake. Squirmy little one over there is, I'm pretty certain, a hen. And I'm not sure about our little tall white one. And then as far as the chickens go, so she's a hen, she's a hen, he's a rooster, he's the other rooster, she's a hen, 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 hen. I think the only one I'm not 100% sure on is this black one right here, who's my oldest chicken. That was the one chicken I hatched out myself. I wonder if spurs are starting to develop, so let me see if I can catch them. Okay, so definitely has a larger than average comb, but because he's a mongrel, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one to use as an indicator. The bigger indicator I see of being a rooster is there's that little bump. I do believe that is a spur forming, so that would make me suggest that you are a rooster as well. The other one that I wonder about is that other black chicken there. That was my free bonus chick. I'm not sure about it, but let's check it out, see if it's a rooster or a hen. At the end of the day, I can only keep two roosters come the fall. Oh no, they escaped. Okay, I caught him. Now looking at this one, I'm gonna guess it's a rooster as well. See that little marking back there? Again, it's not a guarantee, I could be misreading it. I actually think I just misidentified the chickens. That earlier black chicken I was holding, I'm pretty sure that was the freebie chick from my hatchery, Murray McMurray. I think this is actually the one that I hatched out and I playfully nicknamed Duck the Chicken because for a while it was living with a whole bunch of ducks and it was the only chicken. It definitely looks like it has a spurs developing as well. If you look at the size of its eyes, they are absolutely massive. That makes me think that this might be the offspring of one of our Bantam silky roosters. Like look at this chicken compared to this chicken. See how big that eye is? Also, I love the gyroscope head. <laughs> look how big that eye is in comparison to the eye on this chicken. You're gonna be one interesting looking bird. So this one I have here is actually definitely a hen. But like look at the back of her leg, right? See how it's all smooth like back there? Both legs are totally smooth. Then if you look at this guy, he's got that bump right there. 
that's the start of a spur. It's one of the key characteristics when you try to distinguish between a hen and a rooster in the early days. As he gets older, he's gonna display more characteristics that make him look like a rooster, and as she gets older, she's gonna display more hen characteristics. But looking for the spur has been the one that I've been most reliably using to determine the sex of a bird as early as possible. All right, we're gonna do a check back in with them later. I can hear my cows angry because they want fresh pasture, so let's go. Come on, Abby Dabby, let's go do the cattle, huh? Look who we got here. Here's our wild flock of ducklings, running wild. Abby, Abby, tranquilo, tranquilo, tranquilo. Yeah, they pretty much always move as a single unit. It's impressive. That's just how runner ducks are, I found. And most of them are runner ducks. And the ones that aren't are influenced by the runner ducks that they live with. So people have asked, is like Abby becoming my cattle dog and Toby's my bird dog? What I've noticed is both the dogs like to come out with me when I initially start doing the chores. But after a few minutes and like after Toby checks on everything to just sort of like make sure it's okay, he ends up going back down to the birds. Generally speaking, Abby will stay out there with me for as long as I'm out there. So I know that doesn't really answer the question, but I don't think I have an answer yet. This one New Hampshire Red is always the first chicken to come out and greet us every morning. She's actually one of my original flock, but she actually wasn't born on our farm. And I think she just learned that I always bring food, so that's why she's always so quick to come. Yeah, I spent so much time futzing with the birds down there this morning. I'm, I don't know, probably about an hour late for doing my cow and chicken chores. So they will probably be all cranky. Uh-oh, you guys knocked over your ladder. I think I gotta build a hook to make sure this stays more secure. They can easily get in and out if they don't have it, but I like to give it to them. It makes their life easier. There's our welcome wagon chicken slipping back in. Right, let's get you guys some fresh food. And water. I got an email from somebody asking me, since my chicken coop is mobile, how do I get water to my chickens? And the answer is because they're always so close to my cattle, I just steal water from the cattle trough and keep it in that bucket over there. And so it just makes it really easy. There's a couple things I'll probably do a little bit differently with the mobile chicken system for next year, but this has been a super good test run and I'm very happy with how things have gone so far. Come on, Abbley Dabbley. Good girl. Look at our fly traps. I should probably change them. I haven't changed them in about four days. Caught a fair amount of flies. I have not seen a big flare up with my cattle and their fly problems, so that's good news. I'm looking at them right now. Yeah, nobody's got too many flies. I think I see like three flies on Ariel. Speaking of Ariel, so Ariel the Little Mermaid is the first cow that consistently lets me brush her. It's been pretty great. Yes, you are a very good girl. I've been coming out here every single day ever since the first day that she let me do it. Just giving her nice gentle brushing, just like my friend Janet taught me. Tell though these cows want more fresh grass. Her rumen is looking kind of empty right now. She hasn't liked it when I've gotten too far up on her neck. Let's see how far she'll let me go today. Be very careful, I don't want to get poked in the head with her horn. Good girl. Yes, good girl. I think the next animal who's gonna let me do this will be my good friend Mr. Jimi Hendrix. No! Abby! Abby! Tranquilo! Tranquilo! Yeah, she likes to chase and play with them sometimes. I gotta work on that with her as well. She knows not to mess with the older ones, but the little ones, particularly when they get out, she will herd them back in. Look, young lady, you need to behave. Uh, I think that spooked Jimmy for the morning, so I don't think he's getting brushed. All right, cows, let me get you some fresh grass. What you doing back there, Belinda Carlisle? Crunching on my tree tubes? Hey, cows, come on, cows. Fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. Come on, cows, come on. All right, nothing like seeing some happy cows eating grass. My favorite thing. Tranquilo, tranquilo. A commenter rightfully corrected me. I should be saying tranquila, but of course my Spanish is garbage. And so, sorry, <laughs> apologies to everybody who speaks proper Spanish. A calf got out, and so whenever Abby sees a calf out, she will start chasing it. She likes to kind of boss them around. So that's not good though. I don't want her chasing animals. Following them with me is fine, but chasing, again, much like chasing birds, only creates more problems than it helps. Even though I know she probably has the best of intentions with that one. I know part of my problem with how the calves keep escaping is my fence charger. I don't think is actually hot enough. And so what I'm gonna go do now is go back down to the bird yard and try to install a new, more powerful charger. All right, let's go. We're going back down the hill, sweetie.
So this is actually my second attempt at trying to install a new fence energizer. I recently bought one of those Cyclops energizers, which are generally considered the gold standard of fence chargers. And unfortunately though, because it's so powerful and because of the way it has like a pulse cycle, it was actually shorting out my fuse box because these are those GFI or GFR, whatever that is. You know, the outlets that you need in case you're near water and you don't like short something out and kill somebody. Like Vermont building code requires that those are of that ilk because of the outdoor nature of the outlet. But unfortunately that meant that my fence charger kept shorting out everything. This outlet actually runs both the fence charger, which I currently have a decent fence charger from my friends over at Gallagher in here, but I need something that's low impediment and has a little bit more juice. I also use that outlet as a way to power my water pump. And so the way my new water system works is, particularly if I'm trying to send water up to the top part of the hill, not in the paddock where the cattle are right now, but like if I were to go further out into the pasture that I'm currently in the process of fencing in, like if I wanted to send the water up there because I now have lines up there, I need more power than my hydrant offers. And so I was able to buy one of these pumps for, uh, I think it was about 300, 350 bucks. And that gives me all the juice I need to get the water up to the top of the hill. But of course it requires power. But anyway, I digress. I do have this current charger. So if you're curious about how much juice this one's putting out, I'm tapping it to my fence as a ground because it's so high up. And you just gotta tap this to the voltage meter. Yeah, it's about 8.7 right now. Particularly when the cattle are in deep grass, that number goes down. If they weren't in deep grass right now, they'd probably be at about a 10, 10.5. That's actually kind of why I want to have a more powerful charger. The other reason I need a more powerful charger is as I start to finish the fencing up on the top of the pasture, I'm going to be running five strands of high tensile wire. Probably two or three of those strands will be electrified. And so that's going to amount to, I think almost like another two miles of fencing line that I'm adding to this. And so because of that, I just need more juice. And so, I recently purchased more juice. So yeah, it's the Speedrite Unigizer. I gotta admit, it's a lot heavier than my current Energizer. I think it might even be heavier than the Cyclops one that I bought. So I have a power adapter for if I wanted to plug it into the wall, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. But it also has a battery adapter. So if I wanted to plug this and run it off of a battery, I could do that too. Or I bet it could run into a solar array or something if I wanted to. But since I have plug power, I will take advantage of plug power. And my first step before I do anything else is unplug the existing charger so I don't electrocute myself. Now I gotta come in here and unhook my existing energizer. Many hours later. Okay, now I think we're ready. First step is I gotta plug this back in. Now we're gonna switch the energizer on. So it's only reading about 8.9 right now. Now, the one thing I did see when I was reading the instructions is this requires four grounding rods. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with how this stuff works, right? You have your electric side, which goes to your fence, and you have a grounding side, which goes deep into the ground. I currently have one, two, three grounding rods in place. I think I'm gonna need to install a fourth grounding rod somewhere over there. That way I'll be able to actually take full advantage of the power of that energizer. I might have actually just installed something that leaves me at a net neutral. But trust me guys, it'll get better. This is for the future. All right, Abby, you ready to test this thing out? Now remember, how do we do it? That's right. We put this thing to our ground and we put the voltage meter to the fence. Nine. So it's pretty much the same. I'm gonna have to install that other one, but that's gonna be a trip to the store to get yet another grounding rod. Ah, it never ends. <laughs> I will admit, working on farm problems like this one is something I'd much rather be doing than working in an office. The other thing I have to do today is I'm continuing to disassemble my hoop coop. You guys can see our little silky chicks are out running around. They're doing good with their mama Rosie. And we also have things going well in our duck nursery. You can see Ron Swampson and generic duck serving as duck moms. You can see their ducklings are a variety of sizes. The larger ones are the same ones that were hatched out with bean by generic duck here. The medium sized ones are the ones ones that Ron Swanson hatched out, gosh, maybe almost 10 days ago. Can we find a little tiny baby duck? You see her? Micro duck? Right there? She's only, I think now, three and a half, maybe four days old. So much smaller than everybody else, but she's fitting right in. And, and so 
That experiment seems to have worked out pretty well. I'm really glad it did. It made my life a whole lot easier. You know, one thing I have noticed with the ducklings that generic duck hatched out, they are not as big as Bean. I think Bean grew larger because Bean was growing inside the brooder versus out here with the mama ducks. Now, I wouldn't call that concrete scientific proof, but it does support a theory I have that farm ducks generally grow better in a brooder than with a mom. And how's my new crew doing here? Frankie, you adjusting to your new roommates? Yeah, everybody good? You enjoying them? Okay, good. Here guys, I have some wee tasties for you. So all in all, I think I'll be okay with this experiment here. Seems like Frank and Bean are adjusting to their newfound friends. And yeah, they'll spend probably about a month or two as just a small group before I try to mix them in with my other chickens. Thank <laughs> you.